Hey, you're in the wrong lot, aren't you? Oh, just preliminary meetings. Nobody's talking contracts. Great. Still reading books, huh? About the only person I know still does that. My friends just don't read. Certainly not serious books like this, anyway. Well, you always did move in the best circles. He sent me an advanced copy, too. I haven't gotten around to it yet. Don't know how to read anything but dialogue these days. That is, if I ever did know how to read anything but dialogue. <laughs> hey, how about some lunch? You want to have lunch? Well, my horoscope said I'd run into an old friend who would buy me lunch, so yeah. I waited. <laughs> mm. I can't help it. I'll always be disappointed. That you've never married Claiborne. Life ain't a movie, pal. Yeah, ain't it a shame. You heard from him lately? Lately, about two years ago. Yeah, he just got divorced recently, you know. So I heard. Could have been me. Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Some nitwit actress like Nora North, sure. What else? They could have been drawing up divorce papers during the wedding ceremony. But not you, hon. No, you and Claver would have gone the distance. I just know that. You know, he is still in love with you. Why do you think that? The look in his eyes the last time I saw him when your name came up, it's obvious. I'll always be disappointed. I still dream about him. And the dreams were always together. Are you ready? You can't go shopping in your swimsuit. Well, I changed my mind. Is it okay? I just thought maybe I'd hang around, take a walk away at the beach or something. Is that all right? Sure. Just don't go into the ocean by yourself, okay? Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. everybody. Let's go on shopping. I see you're fraught with your usual post-shrink tension.
It was a marriage, sir. Honey? What's wrong? What's happened? Tell me. Tell Mama what happened. And isn't it bad enough that you lied to me all those years that you let me think I was the failure in our marriage? I never meant for you to feel like that. I'm sorry. If that's you, you didn't even have the decency to restrain yourself. You let him see it. And we were here in this house. I'll tell you one thing, Mac. You're not going to see him again. Do you hear me? You will never, ever see him again. Mother. Is there anything in here we can use? Well, I'm not so sure myself, Martha, darling. I know I'm trying to put a case together here. I know that much. I just have a feeling it might be a real help to know where these boys come from to get to where they got to now. One of them dead, one of them near two. One of them a short walk from the gallows. Lots of this is very interesting. For instance, listen to this. Area girl reported missing Eagle Mountain, June 25, 1950. A 16-year-old girl, Laura Kilman, has been reported missing by her mother, Mrs. Sue Beth Kilman. Parker County Deputy Paul Prekow said the youngsters disappeared from her home during the recent storms. He said foul play is not yet suspected. Meanwhile, investigation of the youngsters' disappearance is continuing. And then, Written here in the margin, it says, I presume by Cantrell. Tell Mac and TJ with a big question mark. Now, why would he think of telling Crawford and Luther about something like this? Maybe they knew the girl. Then why wouldn't he just tell them instead of thinking about telling them? I give up. They don't make him like that much anymore, do they? I had a face like that, I'd have been famous too. If you had a face like that, we'd be on the floor with the door locked. You haven't been doing too bad by me with the face I got. <laughs> Living famous. Same as living not famous, I guess. Except more people watch you doing it. I think it's a little more complicated than that, Calvin. So foolish and so false. Hmm? A poem. You waving your Phi Beta Kappa key at me again? There's not a thing on earth that I could name so foolish and so false as common fame. Following these messages for some scenes from tomorrow night's exciting conclusion of Celebrity. Coleco's Adam is worth the wait. Everything a family could need to get started in computing. About the most revolutionary concept. Expansion options almost comparable to professional business computers. Your kids will be using it in no time. Now, Adam, the talk of the computer industry is even better. So much better, we're offering an extended warranty. Twice as long as Apple and IBM. Twice as long as Commodore and Atari. So command the powers of Adam. Nothing near it for the price. Get a little closer, don't be shy, get a little closer.
closer with air, it's solid extra dry. Ordinary deodorant sticks contain nothing to fight wetness. But Arid Solid fights odor and wetness with Arid's powerful anti-wetness ingredient. And only Arid has this baby fresh scent that's, mmm, baby fresh on you. Get a little closer with Arid Solid Extra Dry. Arid Solid fights wetness ordinary deodorant sticks can't. Airborne has moved ahead of the pack and is challenging Federal to a race. Now, Federal starts this race with a big lead, but with a staggering load of packages to carry every day. At Airborne, we're just the right size to give you great service and move fast. So fast that Airborne makes most of their deliveries before 10.30 a.m. No wonder more people are switching to Airborne than ever before. And no wonder we say, watch out, Federal, here comes Airborne. America. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine is tough on colds, but is it tough enough for the miseries of the flu? The flu is miserable. It's a brutal feeling. My body ached all over. My head was all stuffed up. When my nose was running. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine speeds fast relief to the miseries of the flu. Alka-Seltzer Plus is fantastic. It really relieved the, the rotten symptoms of the flu. I just was completely amazed how fast it worked. Excellent product. I recommend it. Tomorrow, Mac can have anything he wants except his son. Maybe he remembers what his father was doing the last night. Tomorrow, Claver's out to discover how TJ's gained his following of millions. We all just fulfilling the needs of the needy. Tomorrow, when these three friends finally reunite, one will kill, one will die, and only one will survive when the truth finally explodes. And all America will witness the shocking conclusion of celebrity. Later tonight, Johnny Carson welcomes Lynn Redgrave. Then on Late Night with David Letterman, meet Robin Williams. We've all been told to act our age, but as Americans grow older, does that mean we're all changing? I'm Bryant Gumbel, and tomorrow morning on Today, we begin a four-part series on America, Coming of Age. Join us tomorrow for Today on NBC. It's a superstar spectacular. Take in concert before a live audience with your favorite stars and their biggest hits. Plus some of rock's greatest moments. More than 50 superstars in two fantastic hours. Be there for a super night of rock and roll. Next Monday at 9, 8 Central and up. On Bluefield's only country station, here comes... It's a brand new year, 1984. A new beginning. As we move through the 80s, we're committed to serving you better. In 1984, we'll stand second to none as we strive to meet the future. We'll give you more of the things you want to hear, what you like to listen to, what you need to keep pace with in the 80s. 1984, a new beginning. It's a new beginning from WBBY. Andy Clark, the Mercer County Giant, has the truck deal you've been waiting for. You won't believe the Giant savings during Andy Clark's 4x4 sale. All new 4x4s in stock have been discounted $2,000. Choose from new Ford Ranger 4x4s, new F-150 4x4s, and new 5250 4x4s. They're all discounted $2,000, but hurry. Offer ends Tuesday, February 14th. Save now at the Giant. Andy Clark, exit off Route 19 460, Princeton, West Virginia. Bluefield. You're watching the news leader for the two Virginians. This is WBBA Television News 6. Good evening, everyone. A successor has been named to fill the position of Soviet leadership vacated by Yuri Andropov. His name is Konstantin Chernenko. Details on his rise to power from Richard Valeriani. Only 15 months ago, when Yuri Andropov became General Secretary of the Communist Party, it seemed that Konstantin Chernenko had reached the end of his political career. Chernenko had appeared to be the clear choice to succeed Leonid Brezhnev. 
He had been Brezhnev's political confidant and personal friend for more than a quarter century. Although Chernenko was outmaneuvered by Andropov, it was he who nominated his rival to become the new Soviet chief. That act of party loyalty apparently paid off. When Andropov failed to appear on Revolution Day last November 7th, Chernenko was first among the leadership on the reviewing stand. Chernenko appears robust and healthy for a man of 72, but he is by no means a dynamic figure. He is thought to be a party secretary who lacks the personal influence and power base to rule the country for long. Richard Valeriani, NBC News. Thousands of mourners paid their last respects today to the late Soviet leader Yuri Andropov as he lay in state for the last day. The United States delegation to the funeral, which will be held tomorrow, was led by Vice President George Bush and Senate Majority Leader Howard Baker. Bush, on his arrival in Moscow, called on the new Soviet leadership to meet with the United States to establish a basis for greater understanding. And the White House said it would welcome a meeting between Bush and Cherninko while the Vice President is in Moscow. Bluefield, Virginia is getting closer to its plan for annexing a portion of Tazewell County. At tonight's town council meeting, members sent a letter of intent to the county's board of supervisors, notifying that they are appointing negotiators and asking the county to do the same. The letter also outlines some of the concessions the town is willing to make in order for the annexation to take place. The town is eyeing a roughly triangular area southeast of its municipal limits, reaching to the West Virginia state line. They are asking that a negotiator be chosen from the Virginia Commission on Local Government in order to avoid any possibility of a court battle over the annexation later. The House of Delegates today passed a bill eliminating the 12-hour delay before teachers can paddle an unruly student. The bill also bans the use of paddles in kindergarten, but allows spanking by hand. Ohio County Delegate Atheas Blatnik spoke against the bill and paddling in general, saying it diverts attention from the real problems in education. As she phrased it, some teachers want to beat kids to improve their test scores. Meanwhile, the Virginia House of Delegates held a heated debate today on a bill sponsored by Jeff Stafford. Tentative approval was given to the measure that bars attendance at state colleges and universities for students who do not comply with Selective Service registration. A final vote on that bill is set for tomorrow. There was some good news for the unemployed today in Tazewell County, unveiled to a gathering of community business and industry leaders. Karen Hillegas has details. 50 to 60 people will be called back to work during the first quarter of this year at the Ingersoll Rand Company in Claypool Hill. The reason? The first of several orders of a piece of equipment called a rock drill, which will be shipped to the Soviet Union. Vice President J.V. McKenney says Ingersoll's New Jersey headquarters authorized the manufacturing of this piece of equipment at the Claypool plant, which means the immediate callback of 15 to 20 workers. For the immediate uh, future, uh, we are planning on bringing about 15 or 20 people back in just for this product. These are people that have been on layoff from s, &S uh, for the past year, year and a half. Uh, the, this represents only uh, just a, a portion of the 50 or 60 people that we're planning on bringing back in during this first quarter. That's as a result of new business for us. Several things I think are very promising. First of all, we are seeing a coal topping off service going into place out of the Port of Hampton Roads, which will improve our export market by approximately $26 million per year. We're also working on new coal technologies, coal and water mixtures that can be burned directly in the place of oil in the oil-fired boilers of industries and utilities around the country. And as we make that technology commercially feasible, I think we'll see massive conversions from oil to coal. According to McKinney, there is a worldwide demand for the rock drill, which is used for quarry exploration and energy research. If the Claypool Hill plant continues to manufacture this model in a manner approved of by the New Jersey headquarters, job security should be certain for most of the called back workers. Karen Hillegas, News 6, Claypool Hill. The Federal Trade Commission today gave tentative approval to a proposed merger between Texaco and Getty Oil. The largest corporate merger in U.S. history would make Texaco the second largest oil company in the nation, just behind Exxon. Its revenue income would move it up from being the sixth largest gasoline marketer to second place. FTC Chairman James Miller made the announcement. This morning, the Federal Trade Commission tentatively approved 
the acquisition of Getty Oil by Texaco, subject to important safeguards to protect those areas of overlap between the two companies. One FTC dissenting vote was cast by Commissioner Michael Pertchuk. Long-term effect of the disappearance of the second-tier oil companies would mean tighter and tighter control of the oil industry by the major companies, from crude production all the way to retail sales of gasoline and home heating oil, and ultimately, higher prices for consumers. The Today's tentative approval opens the proposal up for a 60-day public comment period. Pennzoil has filed several suits to block the merger. All but one have been dismissed. Still to come on News 6, we'll preview Valentine's Day and its offerings. A strike is underway in the Fayette County town of Alloy, and we'll begin a week-long series on women and poverty in West Virginia.